result of deindustrialization. Thank you. Solidarity to you all. Victory to the steelworkers and victory to the working class. to this conference of the National Shop Stewards Network. This is the 17th annual conference of the National Shop Stewards Network, initiated and launched by the RMT Rail and Transport Union under the leadership of Bob Crow. And we are very, very proud of that history and of that legacy. And as Catherine said, and obviously undoubtedly today's attendance is affected by the general election that is taking place. Um, we will have some late comers come into the conference, but that's more to do with the rail of the rail and transport network than, um, than anything else. But of course, it's not a big issue in the general election uh, as, uh, as well. So when I said it's our 17th annual conference, we do the mass, there's a year missing. And the reason why there's a year missing is that in one year, we didn't go ahead with the conference, and that was because in 2017, when Labour was led by Jeremy Corbyn under a transformative manifesto, if you remember, uh, he denied Theresa May and the Tory uh, party at that stage a majority. And there was a demonstration called uh, after, after that uh, election result, and we felt it was the right thing to do at that stage to be part of that demonstration uh, at, that, uh, at that stage. But as we say, one of the major themes in every National Shop Stewards Network conference, meeting, rally, is to support trade unionists taking action. And that is a big theme of what we're going to do today. So if you're in dispute, or could be in dispute, or have been in dispute, uh, then please, when we open up the discussion, then come and have your say. Come and share with us your experiences. Come and tell us how much you won, how much you could win, and how much you're going to win next time in those, uh, in those uh, disputes. And obviously, after I finish speaking, we're going to keep this a little bit of a Welsh thing for a bit, but we're going to have um, speakers about the impending uh, struggle that's going to go to a higher level in Patalbot, the Llanwyrn, and Newport to save the steel industry, not just in South Wales actually, but all over the UK. And that is really important. We've also got speakers here from other disputes. I'm looking at the comrades there in the back row from Basildon in the tractor uh, dispute. But there's many others here that we want to listen to. We're going to listen to about the battle against the council cuts. We're going to listen to the struggle that's going on in Nottingham and other areas that is, uh, that is taking place as well. And of course, as people know, the junior doctors are going to be taking action over the next week. And many, many others, which you can read every single week in the NSSN bulletin that we put out to build solidarity for workers taking uh, action. Because one thing that's not going to change on July the 5th, or any other day, is that this organisation, the National Shop Stewards Network, stands shoulder to shoulder with workers taking action. But of course, there's something else going on this year. I don't know if any of you know, but there's a general election uh, happening. Uh, and it gives us an extra dimension to the debate that we are going to have today. Because how could we proceed as if that election wasn't taking place? And in fact, I would argue that the general election has not only given this conference a, a different dimension, it's given workers struggle right now and in the future a new dimension as well, which I'm sure is going to be a big theme of today's uh, conference. Why is it that the junior doctors are taking action next week? Could I venture to say that obviously that's a big part of all workers taking action uh, right now to put demands on what is likely to be 
uh, a Labour government. And we have never regarded ourselves as independent of political developments. The NSSN is not strictly a political organisation, but that doesn't mean we don't put demands forward. It doesn't mean that we regard the political situation as massively uh, important for us. And how could we, when so much of our campaigning has been involved in opposing the policies of this Tory government? Thirteen and a half years ago, so you can do the maths, six months into the Tory government, or at the time, by the way, a Tory Lib Dem coalition, um, we had to have a big debate in the National Shop Stewards Network because there were some that believed that we shouldn't be involved in the anti-cuts movement. We didn't agree with that because it was the biggest austerity fence offensive for a century, which, of course, we are reaping the whirlwind now, particularly in the public sector and, of course, in local government finance. Um, and we had that debate, and we took ourselves, we took our position uh, front uh, and foremost in the anti-cuts movement against that austerity, uh, austerity uh, attack. And of course, we were told, weren't we, back in 2010, 11 and 12, we were told by Labour councils, there's nothing we can do about the cuts. The best thing that we can do is just go along with them, try and do our best, etc. Will you tell that to all the local authorities now, either issuing or threatening to issue Section 114 bankruptcy notices and the absolute massive attack on workers' jobs, terms and conditions that are, that are front and central right now? We are proud of the role that we have played in that, but also against the Tory anti-union legislation. The Trade Union Act of 2016 that means that the trade unions are the only organisation in society that a simple majority is not democratic. You imagine if every local council or every local councillor could only get elected on the basis of a 50% turnout. There wouldn't be a local authority elected in the UK, and yet that is one of the loopholes that we have to go through. But of course, the minimum service level legislation that is now on the statute book, that is now in law, then of course we have played a really important role in, put, in uh, demanding that the trade union takes uh, action uh, against that. So no one should be in doubt. No one will be happier to see the back and the collapse of the Tory government, the collapse that is happening before our very eyes. They are impending defeat is a victory for working class people, is a victory for trade unionists that have had to take on their austerity and the anti-union uh, legislation. It is a decisive answer to the pessimists in our movement who believe that the victory of Johnson in 2019 represented a new period, if you like, of Tory supremacy, an idea that we never accepted, that that idea the working class were defeated. Actually, as Mick Lynch has said, if anything, the working class has proven over the last two years in particular that we are backed. We, the working class, has reacted to that victory, the strike wave that has taken place, the biggest level of industrial action we have seen for over three decades, and actually a major factor in the building of opposition to this Tory government and the disintegration uh, of the Tories. So we will celebrate the demise and the defeat of the Tories when we wake up on July the 5th. But we also have a responsibility. We also have a responsibility to face up to the tasks that are posed by that election result and by the likely election of a Starmer-led new Labour government because we cannot ignore where Starmer's programme comes from, where his position starts from. We can't ignore that Rachel Reeve said that Labour is now the national party of the employers. We can't ignore them saying in advance that they will uh, abide by Tory spending limits. 
We can't ignore that they're support by big business, billionaires, and of course we cannot ignore the position they have taken on Gaza, a disgraceful tail ending of the Tories. And that's why we've opened up this conference to a debate by the workers' movement, or at least this part of the workers' movement, if you like, about what is the demands that we have to fight for. Because we think that's really, really important. And you're going to hear from Ian Odson, the national president of the Bakers' Union. And they've got a workers' manifesto. They've got, and he can tell you all about it. I'm not going to nick your snazzy uh, headline of that, but it's you know, really important that the unions outline that, but other unions have uh, as well, and I'm sure they will speak about that during this, uh, this debate. Because we've always put forward a programme of demands to supplement, to add to, to give strength to the industrial action the workers have taken over this period. And can I just say, by the way, the demands you see in the motion that you've got that you've taken today when you've come in here, yeah, that's only an initial set of demands. That's only an initial programme of demands that we've, be, we've, been, uh, we've put forward, and they could be added to. They're not exhaustive. I would add, in hindsight, by the way, the immediate funding of local government, the Astama government makes sure that no cuts, no councils makes cuts, that all the bankruptcy notices are taken away when they come into <laughs> office. But we've used those demands in all the major disputes. So we don't just support the steel workers in Batalbat, although we will do. We will be on their picket lines as we've marched with them. But we take it further. We call for the Starmer government to intervene. We believe the steel industry should be nationalised to save jobs and defend communities. We supported the Royal Mail workers. We stood in their picket lines. We marched on Buckingham Palace with them when they filled Parliament square a couple of years ago, but we believe Royal Mail should be renationalised, so we don't allow the parasites to make even more money at the expense of Royal Mail workers. Now, as Catherine has explained, we've invited parties to, to debate or be part of the debate today. There's going to be one big debate, by the way, because how could you not have a discussion about these disputes and not talk about what demands we put forward uh, in the uh, election? Uh, in that way. So we haven't got everyone here today, but we've got a couple that are going to add to that debate. And of course, we have you as well, just as importantly to be part of that, uh, of that uh, demands. And those demands that we have to raise in the union movement to fight for under what is likely to be a Starmer government. And that is why you've also had this leaflet. We always lobby the TUC Congress in September this week this year, rather, it's in Brighton. And the reason why that's important this year is because this lobby is almost exactly two-thirds of the way into the first hundred uh, days of a Starmer government. This is us holding their feet to the fire. This is us saying, how far have you got implementing the policies that we need? This is us taking our manifesto to the seaside, to the trade union movement, and fighting for that in the interests of workers' uh, of workers' interests. Starmer's starting point, Reeves' starting point, Wes Streeting's starting point, may be to act in the interests of big business, but doesn't mean that's the end of the story. Doesn't mean that we can't fight them. We can fight. We fought the Tories for 14 years, and on occasion have won significant steps forward. We welcome the defeat of the Tories, comrades. But on July the 5th, it's not going to be the end. It's going to be the beginning of a new phase of struggle of workers in Britain. Because, as the strike wave has shown, our class is back. This is a new period. And when and if the Starmer government takes on workers, they will be taking on workers who have taken action over the last couple of years. A new generation of working class fighters has been born. We are part of that struggle. That's the fight we're going to take on. Thanks. Thank